82 portraits, one still uh, exhibition. Right? Just to show you, right? Yeah. Right? I was there, it was chilly, very, very cold. Now, yesterday, when I was there, it was 18. Yesterday, it was 89 degrees. That's, that's London for you, right? Some of it, and you know, um, the summer exhibition, I would encourage you all to go. It's the single largest open modern exhibition, art exhibition in the world. They typically have about 1,100 exhibits, and they receive an application of almost 20,000, uh, and when they only select about 1,000, right? Um, you can visit the website. You know, I have, again, uh, full of variety. Um, uh, I think the dynamism and the openness upon which everyone can express themselves, from art, photography, to sculpture, and everything in between, right? Um, this is by, I quite like this, um, this is by Lisa Wilson. Uh, it's a floating, I, I can't remember the name, but basically it, it's, it occupies the book room. If you zoom into it, it's a portrait of all the photograph that she has taken uh, since the, you know, she took up photography. Yeah? Uh, just to show you, uh, I, don't, I don't know whether you know this, the, the, the uh, installation where the guy is floating. It's called a, a Balloon Boy. It's by a famous uh, black uh, artist in, in, in UK. I can't remember his name now, but he's not on a wheelchair. So he did that, uh, he, you know, he was commissioned. I think he's selling it there for £600,000. Right? Um, this is the one that I went. The one on the right is when it was handy. I took it from the internet, the one on the left. It's the only photograph that was allowed to take. No one is allowed to take. I put up my iPhone and then after that someone says, no photographic piece. <laughs> right? uh, again, if you know David Hockney, uh, I think I shared with you some of the David Hockney work. A lot of it now is, you know, he took um, uh, this series to about nine, uh, he, took, he, he drew 90 photographs, 82 was uh, exhibited. Yeah. Every photograph or every portrait was on the same chair with the same background, right? And it took him three days to paint this. So he selected 82 plus one portrait. The reason for one portrait because he was ready to, he was up and ready to paint, and the guy did not turn up. So what do you do when you are ready to do? You know. And so he put some some fruits and vegetables on the table, and he painted it. There you go, right? <laughs> because he was ready. That's what it is. So anyway, you, you all know about David Hockney. I wish I had like, one of his paintings. I don't think I can afford it. <laughs> I don't know whether you know it, but I spent, my wife told me last week that we have spent almost two million just for collecting those that are out of work. So that's what a lot of work that I've done. Um, another phrase that I want to share with you when I was in London is this. <laughs> Do you know about this? It's very important. It's very, very important. It's coming some um, this one. Pokemon just got real with its new augmented reality mobile game, Pokemon Go. The game gives players the chance to catch Pokemon overlaid on a real world view from the phone's camera. It's only been out a few days, but it's already proved a monster hit. So much so that at times the game's servers have been overwhelmed. Like the original game, it's all about catching and battling Pokemon, although things work a little bit differently. To catch a Pokemon, I just flick a Pokeball at it, no battling required. The Pokemon pop up at random using your phone's GPS location, although there have been some concerns that people might absentmindedly run into the road while trying to catch Pokemon. There are already reports that one man in the US fell off his skateboard while playing the game. The game does warn you at the beginning to always take care of your surroundings, but it's very easy to get immersed and carried away, and there are likely to be a lot of children playing. As I walk around visiting landmarks in the real world, I can collect items and battle other players in the virtual world. None of the stops require you to actually go into buildings. One police force in Australia said people have been going inside the station to catch Pokemon. No need for that. But there's also been a serious incident. These men in the US have been charged for allegedly trying to lure players to a secluded poker stop to rob them. And this statue is my final stop. It represents a Pokemon gym, and it's where I can battle other trainers and have a shot at becoming a gym leader. One thing it has succeeded in is mobilizing an army of gamers who used to play Pokemon in the virtual world and are now meeting to play it in the real world too.
Okay. Um, it's coming near you, even if you don't play, your kid will play or your chuchu will play. <laughs> it's, the, it's the biggest craze now happening in the Western world. Um, when they launched it in America, there were 25 million downloads within three days. Right? Uh, they launched it in UK when I was there. My son managed to get 59 Pokemon. <laughs> right? and, uh, uh, and I can guarantee you that majority of the players are mid in the mid-20s. <laughs> okay. It's not just for, for kids. Right? Um, a little bit about me, I know you should you should have you know. So that's in all the university that I'm associated with, I think I should tell with you, but I told you that uh, my background is that I was the founding, one of the founding members of the multimedia university. Uh, I set up the faculty of creative multimedia as you know today. I did the first uh, digital or creative multimedia course in Malaysia and that's where I earned my start as far as the uh, uh, digital world in education is all about. Right? I continue to be council member at all the, uh, and board member of the university that you see and also um, uh, adjunct professor and visiting professor of all the other universities as well. I graduated as an architect, um, but I did my PhD in computer science. Right? So I set up this. This is something that I do in two days out of the, the other days that I don't spend at the, at the uh, office. I set up uh, Yasan Ikohati. Uh, I will, you know, I, the next project that we are launching is together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I have uh, pledged 50 million of my money uh, in order to run this. And basically, um, the aim is to encourage women entrepreneurs. Right? You will hear more about this uh, very, very soon. So we are launching this uh, um, nationwide and, and I hope that more of you, you know, uh, one of the target audience will be uh, students, so female students at UITM. Uh, for your information, the uh, the uh, the setup, the academic uh, owner of this yayasan will be at UITM faculty of I think Rob Zarina from Entrepreneur. Right? Um, yeah, this is why I founded the company. I left university. Uh, you know, 2011, uh, 2003, I set up the university, uh, this uh, Prestaria. I think uh, uh, we got listed about five years back, right? 27, almost five years now. When I talked to you uh, three years ago, when I listed the company is worth 200 million, and when I talked to you, it was about three, 400 million. Now it's about one million. Right, so we, in terms of our market cap, in terms of the value of the company, has increased quite a lot. Uh, we are a talent and technology company. I don't want to go and you heard about all our global partners. Uh, what we do is that we train a lot of people. Right? Uh, you know us more of the fact that we distribute all, whatever, all the Microsoft, all the Autodesk, and so all the Adobe that we use in university in Malaysia will be distributed by us. We are Microsoft's largest partner in Malaysia and we are also Autodesk's largest partner in Malaysia. You know Autodesk from the fact that you are an architect, you use AutoCAD, if not, you will use some of the animation software uh, that, uh, you know, I can't remember all the, all the animation software, right? What is it? Some of it.
Niki Award as well. And we are the only, uh, again, company who are listed in the uh, part of the, what they call FTSE for good, right? You see, Pestaram is the smallest company in this. The rest are Petronas, Telecom, Shabon, all these people. So we have done well from the corporate perspective. Like I said, most of the time, I talk to bankers more than I talk to people like you. This is where my lecture starts. <laughs> okay. My talk, my lecture. Yeah. Um, I want to share with you some of the images. I think I mean, the, 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 the topic here is called changing world, it's changing expectation. Both this is new. You know who are these millennials? I think the topic that you get. And look at some of the data or analytics about this millennial. Right. So this is something that we all familiar. That's why I asked you about your age. Life was easy and simple at that time, right? My last thing, like, I still remember. Uh, uh, very relaxed. Yeah? I wasn't, I was, I wasn't that lucky because I was born right in the middle of Monaco, and Monaco town. So I go to, <laughs> so Kampong, I don't understand Kampong, right? right? But you know, Kampong Mountain is just <laughs> close to you. That's the closest Kampong that I, I have experienced, right? Uh, we used to be great ones. Our film was. We are lower than Zimbabwe. There is a reality. No, we, we love Zimbabwe, right? Our PISA ranking is lower than Zimbabwe. Even though we spend higher than COVID. I need to ask other people. I'm not here to address this. There's another one. It's right between my brain and others. And something that I'm working with in Gira College to, to assist the government to see how we can increase or at least improve our PISA score. So I think this is what we are. And these are the things that we relate to, right? Uh, the digital war opportunities. I've got to go into the dark room. I remember counting elephants, one elephant, two elephants, three elephants. <laughs> right? uh, the VCR, the, you know, I remember when I was a student, right? I have this, right? you see that man's here. Look at the size of the mobile phone, right? That's the red. And this is the music that we used to I, 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 I listen to it. And the cats, you know, Billy Floyd, and when I went to the UK, Boy George was crazy. Everybody was crazy about Boy George. Right? <laughs> so, but look at what these guys are. This bunch of group of people called the Malay. This is how they communicate. Even among themselves, they don't talk to each other, they communicate by the phone, right? You all have got kids, you have got children, and you know this is how they communicate. Totally different animal, right? This is probably the classroom, right? Huh? You know, I don't have the local classroom seat. This is probably the classroom that is picking up in terms of business. And this is probably the favorite pastime. Selfie was invented by the millennials, right? <laughs> right? This is their favorite pastime. And, and you know, if you compare to what we were in the Kampong, my Goni, my Gassim, I don't think any of them understood what we are. So the narrative, the conversation that you guys should have, I think it's important that you understand where you come from. Right? This is probably the brand that they associate with. Right? Don't like Starbucks, Waze, Uber, uh, YouTube, too more. And do you know that all of this is only happening in the last 10 years? These brands, yeah. yeah, this brand is only 10 years old, no more than that. Not many people understand, right? The last 10 years, all of these brands pop up, right? And I think they will be around for quite a while. Right? So who are they? I pick up, I went to the internet, this is I call this the best way to show you guys is by graphics. They are those who were born between 1980 to the year 2000. To the year 2000. Yeah? If you are not part of the 1990 to 2000, then you are outside this, this group of people called millennials. How many people are millennials? May I know? That's why the Balibisi is 
in the US, I'm showing you the, the, the larger generation, and that's why everyone is going after them because they are also the future. Right? Uh, they grew up alongside technology, we all know that. They, they, they grow or they live on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. I, I show you some of the brands, right? And social media or social network is the dominant factor upon which the platform they communicate, right? Do they matter? I think they should because, like I said, they are the single largest group in Malaysia as well. And, and there's a lot of uh, research that they're going to make a lot of difference. The difference that they're going to make will be multiplied compared to what we did when we were at this age, right? Um, it say that they're confident, they have high expectation, and they are very much achievement oriented. Right? So this is Malaysia. We don't have that many data. This is something that I got from the start. Right? Uh, more importantly, you should see that those age group between 15 and 34 make up the highest portion of our population. Right? 10.8 million out of the about 30 million population. Though are, they are both uh, politicians are looking at it simply because I think they will determine the next election, for example. Uh, marketers are looking at it because they use a lot of uh, uh, digital devices where they can target using big data how to make sure that they spend more money. <laughs> I think that's the bottom line of everybody who is doing market or uh, other business, right? Uh, from Malaysia, is again, there's a lot of data. They say that they, the Gen Y, they don't have the millennials, but the latest, the, the process is Gen Y. I got this slide, probably you can, you can share this slide to everybody, yeah? Because this slide is just cool, right? They like to work, play, they have fun, right? They enjoy networking, all of this, right? They're independent compared to, remember, uh, a lot of us, when we do, why I want to show you is this. A lot of the, those who develop your curriculum are from the baby boomers. A lot of decision makers are baby boomers. And yet, the impact of the baby boomers decision making will be on the Gen Y or the millennials, we call it. So you need to understand that better, I think. Right? If not, then there will be a big gap between expect what you want, the baby boomers in your curriculum, and what is the expectation. And therefore, when you don't, there is no uh, synergy. Uh, we you do that I think that's where the problem lies. Right? This is another state, right? 91%, right? Uh, it's 90, <laughs> 96 hours per month uh, they spend on the digital network. In real, I think maybe Malaysia is like thinking because the biggest user of Facebook in the whole bloody world is Malaysia, right? Uh -huh. So maybe this one is you know, Malaysia with the statistic is even higher. Right? <laughs> Betul, tak belakang tu. I'm looking at that, you know? <laughs> Whether this data is right, right? See here. They also, you know, even Time magazine uh, showed, you know, did a, uh, an article about that. They said it's all about the me, me, me. Very selfish. But if you look at, I read the, uh, I subscribe to Time. And you say that you know we are supposed to uh, put all our future in the hands of this millennial, and, and I think that's quite frightening to ask. Right? Okay, uh, I share with you. This is more of the data that I like to use. This is the reference that I like to use. Uh, uh, Grown up digital uh, by John Ted Scott. I think I showed you the last time. I continue to believe that. This data is valid. And what they have done, what John Tesco has done, is to follow uh, 20,000 millennials, Gen, Gen Y, yeah? uh, across the world over a period of 15 years, right? And did a big study, big data study about, about them. And this is what they found, right? I shared with you. Right? This is the eight norms together, the characteristic or the eight norms of this. That's why I got They price freedom and the freedom of choice. You, you tak boleh bagi tahu dia apa nak buat. Right? Uh, they like to customize things. Kalau dia beli phone tu, mesti nak dia punya sendiri, flat dia, dia punya cover sendiri. You know, everything is, they like to customize. 
They are natural collaborators. Actually, they are natural collaborators. Uh, and they want a conversation. And they don't like, like to be lectured. So when I told uh, the minister, the first thing, because Malaysia is looking to develop the next university of the future, they call it, get rid of all lecture halls. Right? Why you need lecture hall? Because they don't want to be lectured. Right? It's more of that conversation. You need to de develop spaces for conversation instead of being lectured. Right? They like to scrutinize you. You see everything that you do on the internet, and if you don't do well or you do something else, especially on the politics, you will tell you that they don't like it. They right? insist on integrity. They like to have fun. I think that's the idea. Duduk pergi masjid pun nak fun. Hari ini saya suka. Betul. Confirm. Kan? Masih tawa pun nak fun. Masih ada kuping on phone. This is my, my, my challenge. Never mind. This is what, <laughs> what you are. We need to coexist. <laughs> huh? and, and speed is normal. Everything is instant. Betul? Everything is instant. They want it. Uh, Sama kita pun dah terbawa-bawa. Bila kita ingin. Kita... Uh, text or WhatsApp, we expect an instant answer. If not, then we do. If an instant answer, we do. 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 90% of university students are connected online. I don't know what happened to the 10, I think it would be, right? Main activities are communicating with friends, family, games, and entertainment. But 47% of the data that in Malaysia owns notebook. And therefore, if you think about it, university don't need computer labs anymore in the future. Everybody owns notebook. So the concept that a lot of overseas bring your own. They rather you know, they rather have their own MacBook. If you remember the first page that I uh, the picture that I showed, everybody wants to know. Right? 30% of the internet users, uh, uh, they, they participate in video, blah, 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 all these things. Uh, but more importantly, something nice as far as education is the concerned. 78% says that the internet helps them with the assignment. Tapi there's another big problem. When they go to the internet for all their assignment, the biggest issue of doing that is called plagiarism. So you need to you need to address it, right? There's nothing wrong going to the internet. That's a lot. I would be very worried if you do your assignment without referring to the internet. But you need to teach them how what not to do when you're on the internet, especially uh, we expect of. Uh, Academic, academic integrity, yeah? they do want academic integrity. Yeah, they do podcasts, you know, they say they tax any moment, any 26% say that they tax while driving. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think I want to do what they need. And you know, some of the nasty things that happen, they receive such things, they call it nasty things. And this is very dangerous. Whatever you put up online stays online. Why not? You will leave it out. Do you know that a lot of companies now, before they interview you, before they you know they call you all this, but they will look up on your Facebook to see what are the nasty things that you have done. What are you? Kadang itu selfie, selfie culture kan? Betul, boleh boleh. Ah. So be careful, whatever you put up online, stays online. You need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. Then, uh, and this is the bigger why. I mean, you we need to know people by what they post. You know, last time you just call them, you look at the CV two page. Skagam, you need to do a lot of work right, before that. Hey, the internet. That's why Microsoft bought LinkedIn for how much? 26 billion or something like that. And they own smartphones. I think now more 100% everybody owns smartphones. So I want to show you, you know, in education, this is a short video where we are in. I hope that for our class, we all can. So you video.
think the message is clear, right? Some of the key message, for example, is that we teaching and learning is conducted now. We got to go online simply because of the internet. Uh, a lot of graduates, uh, uh, you know, they are, you know, a lot of the jobs are not even available in the next. You know, it's not even uh, created yet. And more importantly, a lot of people will have five to six jobs throughout their lifetime. Eh? Kalau kita ni lecturer, lecturer saja kan? You, eh? but you you will see a lot of these millennials having lots of jobs throughout their life. So we need to prepare ourselves for this, right? So I'm going to go through serious stuff a little bit. Eh? If you don't mind, and this is some of the ideas that I have. Might be wrong, might be not. This is a narrative that I pick up and So what are the issues? Can we think of? Can everybody has got their own problem, right? I will look at the graduates, you know, what what is the expectation, what are the challenges, I'll look at you guys, and I'll also look at the demand of the university and more importantly what the technology is doing. So that's my narrative for this, right? You think of what is the most single important problem of students now? Abodia. The, they don't care about anything. You know, even before they start work, they are going to buy a car. They are going to buy So this is the reality. You have to... This is the problem. Huh? So why should we go to university? A lot of people in, in, in uh, US, the number of people that is outside the university is more than inside the university. People are therefore questioning. Why should I go through these four years of education at the end of that four years and burden with 100,000 worth of debt? Wow, I need to be ready here. Yeah, we have to be careful. So, the other way of going to university. And then, they, you know, after all giving all this loan that they're taking, they expect everything to be free. Good. That's why you ask for Bila universiti kena bayar lagi. So, this is the dilemma. I think that's the priority. And of course, at the end of the day, can they be employed? Betul tak? Masih lagi 20% of that. So, these are the demands and these are the challenges. And and of course, the question is how much can I earn? Right? Because, can I service? You know, a lot of my son's friends, and I'm sure they have kids as well, you know, when they earn, the money that they earn, it's just enough for them to go to work. Betul tak? Untuk dia pergi kerja. Dia earn money so that dia boleh pergi kerja. <laughs> 2,500, you know, Roma, Paul, Astro, the friend ada lagi tu. So, this is the demand. I think we have to play that. So, never mind. I just show you what I got. I got a 25 people. Why you still living here? And one of the characteristics of millennials, the millennials, they are called also the boomerang generation. Tak boleh buat, semua dia keluar, dia datang balik. So, dia keluar. They are also called the boomerang generation. Eh? Millennials. Okay, so that is the, you know what, the millennials punya, punya issue lah, jalan dia. Lecturer, you never see you all, I kesian sebenarnya. Man, I'm, I'm glad, I say sorry to say, I'm glad I'm outside the system, right? Skills gap. You don't want to skills gap and why you this skill. No. Is your, uh, your curriculum relevant, relevant to you? Huh? You have to do job ready. Huh? Instead of do philosophy, university broad based. Huh? Uh, you have to teach fundamental, you know, so that they can adapt to any situation. Now, how are you? Job ready, it's more job ready, you know. Uh, and of course, now they remind university ranking. Huh? <laughs> right? And then, now you have this online versus online. Remember, the millennials are more comfortable with the online. There's a big push now towards more massive online open prospect with the city of Coursera, edX. Right? I've not even told you about the challenges of university versus some of the big companies. In IT, do you know that Google or Apple or Microsoft now have their own degree? And you can get it online. So as an employer, seriously, for me, if I see a degree, a local degree with a degree from Google, I probably have no idea how to take the Google degree. You need ready. Yeah? Anyway, that's all. Budget cap, otherwise, you know, comfort. Budget cap, up to 40%. And then, of course, for you guys, research versus teaching. I told, I asked Prof. Hassan, and I, I, I confirmed with Prof. Uh, Joe, 
that the number of professors, the least number of professors in the whole university is this very good. Ini lah yang ada isu di bawah kalau dia guna promotion kena ada kena ada research kena ada publication itu lah yang cerita lah. I can talk on and on by the way. And of course technology. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing for that thing. Very very quickly. This is not the academy. To be connected also. From Facebook to Twitter, social media is everywhere. In many classes at Duke University, professors like Mark Anthony Neal are embracing it by encouraging their students to use social media. We actually develop a class uh, identity, you know, for hip hop. So, you know, the class itself functions as its own kind of Twitter identity. And again, the whole idea is to be able to promote the great conversations that are taking place in the class. This may seem like your typical college lecture, but this class is unique because students have the opportunity to pull out their cell phones and tweet about the highlights. We encourage students to tweet. Right. Whatever's going on in the class, you know, the you know why they're they not vote. Yeah, the more majority now being not vote, everyone to do has a mobile. We took it to a whole other level, so how a whole other level and how by making sure folks could follow yeah. the conversation by following the hashtag. Students and faculty members use social media as a platform for discussion, both within the classroom and outside the class as well. Look, I've got more video, I want to stop there, but the message is clear. How many of you use social media in the classroom right now? Bagus. Ada satu je. Jangan malu. Serius. I think if you don't do it, bagus. Millenniums, the lecturer, takkan tak pakai social media. Eh? If your millennials, uh, lecturers are majority women. No, I just noticed that. Your bunch of ladies there. Is it, is it a phenomenal here? Yeah? Just like in schools, where all teachers now are, are women. No, no. There's a girl power, I know, but you also need to make a difference, right? This is serious. If you are clever, you better make a difference. That's what I said. If you are given that opportunity, you better make a difference. So again, I think about time is very easy. You have the simplest that you can do is a WhatsApp group, right? It's simple, yeah. But I mean, we need to we need to communicate with them better. Like I've said they don't like to be lectured. It's not going to take over the whole world. I'm not saying that this is the only communication, but start using them, right? Start using them. Okay, employers, right? Tadi kita tengok like uh, student, lecturer, and the employers. Work ready. Are they work ready? Semua tanya. Salary scale, fresh graduate. Tak naik naik since the last 20 years. Dua ribu setengah starting salary. Tak naik naik dah dua puluh tahun. Very unfair. Right, to me lah. That's why in my company everybody starts at three thousand ringgit. But you got to, if you got first class, then we start at three thousand five hundred. Because that's a reality, right? Of course, I get more first class than <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Do they have any first century skill? These are the things that employ you look at, right? Um, they also want flexi hours. So I'm going to turn up until nine to five, and we have to adapt to them, right? And they, they, they want competitive, they want promotion training, you know. Loyalty, they almost zero. They are loyal lah. I give mean, based on somebody else, give them higher salary, they chuckle. Comfort. Right? And then, they say they hard work. We always ask, have they got ambition, right? So, uh, this is what people say, the great divide. This is what they say, this is what they have. Uh, employer punya, punya perception. They say they are people savvy, okay lah. Right? Uh, they are savvy because they have got 3,000 Facebook friends. That's why they call it. <laughs> uh, they are tech savvy confirmed. Right? They are loyal to employer. That's what they say. Uh, uh, fun loving. Uh, they are also hard working. They are they hard working. But look at the loyalty thing. They are they are loyal. But employer kata only 1% is loyal. So there's a, again a mismatch of expectation between what they say and what employer. So it's managing expectation. Banyak problem. Sekarang ni banyak managing expectation. So let us look. Now technology pula, everything is internet. Betul? Uh, internet of things now. I, this is serious. You have to take seriously look at internet of things. If any of your product design now, you do any product design without internet of things, you are in trouble. I'm telling you. Right? Everything is connected to the internet now. There are 2 billion devices connected to the internet now. 
So beware. I personally think that if you do product design without Internet of Things, I think there's something wrong with your curriculum. Anyway. So obsolescence was the state of the art, big data analytics to people. Right? I just asked why I don't. <laughs> Sorry, eh? I lost you a little bit of trouble. Yeah? So these are the current narrative. What I did was to look at one of the conferences in art and designs, right? Augmented studio, yeah? cross-disciplinary education, human machine interface, collaboration, storytelling. Storytelling is important. Right, I check out the minister. Minister Selangor check out what? English communication is important. I say, oh shit, those are old. What the point of you able to communicate if you don't know how to storytell? I'm storytelling now. Storytelling is more important than knowing or conversing in English. Right? So, and you guys are in the position, if you see my lecture, a lot of it, I want to tell you, you are in the best position to make a lot of difference. Right? Okay? 3D technology, you know that everything is digital now. And I told Rob, now they talk about from STEM to STEAM. This is what they you know? STEAM, do do STEM. STEM is about science, technology, engineering, mathematics. But in the US, what is missing in this four letter is the word of art. Again, I told Rob, you better push this because you can make a difference. Right? Without art, because they are only looking at the left side of the brain, they are looking at the right side of the brain. You need to have a balance. I'm quite lucky. I do balance. Right? I do architecture, but I also do programming. Right? So how do we react? So does it make sense so far, manager? Bam, under the platform. How do we react? I don't know how do you react. I can only share with you some of my ideas and thoughts and vocabulary. And I think because of the millennial, because of the things that I put in my introduction, right? You need to go to the internet more and more. So one of the first things I want, the internet as inspiration. Like it or not, it's going to be there now, future, forever. I don't see internet. Going away. <laughs> so embrace it, now, please. Yeah, globally. Start fresh. I think you are trying to consolidate. I told the minister, minister trying to do the uh, university of the future. I said, no point of building a new physical infrastructure. You already have the best from 20 universities. All you need to do is to pick up the best brain and put them in one ecosystem. And they can even work anywhere. Okay? An open platform where small pieces loosely join together, just like the internet. That's what the internet was done. You know, who, wants, who controls the internet? Nobody. But everybody can contribute to the internet. So they are they consist of small pieces loosely join. Is the terminology called by David Weinberger, right? Uh, in the uh, uh, his book on Unified Theory of the Web. Kalau kalau you baca, saya baca. Alhamdulillah, very good. And no one wants to do anything. And they encourage open innovation where everybody can create a portion of a big picture. You do. So when you design this or you do this, I suggest that you start. I want to go straight now. Start with the master program and do this. So now, I'm going to start degree program and achieve it. Anyway, so, so what is this vision open innovation? I think I shared with you. It's still better. Right? Closed innovation versus open innovation. I think they talk a lot about open innovation now. It's not something new. It's uh, developed. This uh, concept was developed by Prof. Henry, uh, UC Berkeley. Huh? Uh, let us see. Closed innovation. Smart people used to work with us. Right? Not all smart people. We need to work with smart people inside and outside the company. They can be anywhere in the internet. Right? The Prof. Henry, we need to discover, develop, and shape it. No. Whoever can monetize. The IP from anybody on the internet wins the game, right? The company that gets so many no, building better business model, right? Building better business model and get to the market first is more important, right? If we create the most, the best idea, we will win. The best idea, the, if we make the best use of the internet and external idea, then we can win. And finally, it says that. We can profit, we should control IP, so we should profit from other use of IP, and we should buy wherever it advances our business model. 
need some of the concept of what open innovation is. So, therefore, we need to build a digital platform, I think, right? Because the internet is nothing but a platform, loosely joined together, right? And this is what it is, right? Can you think of what the concept of platform? Uh, in 19th century, they got roads and railways, more than that, transportation. 20th century, they have airports. But now, if you look, it's about the internet. Right? And you look at it, an example, people are embracing it, companies are embracing it. I shared with you the last time as well. Boy, yeah, Master they bought uh, 707 from 1950 to 60. It took them 18 years to develop this. And 98% are done in America. Look at what they did. The new drip line. They outsourced 70% of everything. Right? And they took them seven years from design to production compared to Lusan to fly. Of course, they have the battery problem and things that are separate. But it took them, you know, they cut short by 60% the whole thing, right? Their role is just, we call it the Seattle, outside Seattle, they just assemble. You know what? This is what they have. I need it. Everything outsourced. We need a bigger scale, kind They own the IP, they own the, the digital grid, the, the, the rest they outsource faster. There are people that can do better, cheaper, faster. Why are you trying to do everything? Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? Something like that. Okay? And you should be doing that as well. Right? When you solve a problem, not all problems you can solve as a designer, as an artist, or, or fashion designer, or whatever. They are bringing the best solution, the best expert from everywhere. Right? And look at Apple. Right? Apple, not many people know, is a platform company. Do you know that Apple don't produce anything? They just designed it. Right? Two more things. One of the other two, iPhones. Yeah. What does he say? Saya semua iPhone. Bahkan dia cakap apa? Made in uh, California, assembled in China. Yeah. That's what it is. Right? They don't own any assembly part. Do they need it? They focus on design. They own all the IP. They own all the application. The rest, they also. In fact, you see the outsource. 100% contracted the Samsung, Samsung, Infineon, Balada, iPhone, like Nago. But they own the pattern, they own the IP, they own the digital terminals, they own the platform. Right? This is where the future lies. You don't have to own everything. That if you, your design school doesn't have certain expertise, bring from other design school. What's the problem? What's the problem? Right? I think. Yeah? So I have to, I, I, I don't have lawyer. I, I use a lot of lawyer. But I, I hire the best lawyer because I'm not a law company. Right? I hire I, I used to be an architect. Now I hire architect and because I don't do architecture. Right? I hire the best financial uh, the banker because again we are not a banking. So that's what it means, right? So let us look at the content for the platform. Bro. So you need the people first. So what kind of people do you need? You need them. What I noticed, people are trying to do differently if you want to do differently. They assemble anti-disciplinary team. This is by a coin, by Gio Ito, a media lab. It's a friend of mine, right? To push the boundary by bringing people ideas that are going against the accepted norm and risk with them. Yeah. If something can be done at your faculty, at this faculty, I don't want you. I want something that you cannot do there, but you want to be able to do somewhere else. I need to do And you know why? Because if you don't have a good team, you need a good team that is different because you know the outcome. You want student, what I call X-Men. You want to produce X-Men. <laughs> Extraordinary power. Kalau tak sama, ya. Yeah? That's why I say from, kalau boleh, you start kecil dulu with a master program to do something like this. If not, susah. Nak tukar, semua susah. You start small, yeah, I think with a master program, probably an idea, right? <laughs> Looking at the normalities at the edge of the curve, that make it work, right? Expanding semua ada extraordinary. Dia punya power satu je, lebih lagi orang lain, betul tak? Cerita semua, saya dah tengok semua expand, kan? <laughs> dia boleh buat satu, dia buat, boleh freeze orang ke, dia ada, dia ada satu. <laughs> Tapi dia boleh buat lebih dari orang lain lah kan? So, so this, I think we should look at this. How do, I'm not saying this is a metaphor, okay? <laughs> it's a metaphor saja, yeah? But 
in my work, I, I, I advantage is that I look at everything. So the vocabulary, again, you need to have a start culture. Uh, ini masalah, kita tengok, kalau, kalau tengok, now the shape is from job seeker to job maker. Betul? So, semua orang nak cari kerja buat apa? Macam mana? Kan? Gaji dua ribu setengah. Tak boleh. Pening kepala you. If everyone is an entrepreneur, you tak ada masalah if I'm employed with you. Just think about it. Right? If everyone, you create entrepreneur, you know it's not going to happen. But you don't have any problem with that problem. Anyway, huh? but to do that, lecturer can start lah sikit dulu. Right? A lot of universities now around the world, all lecturers have got company. Right? At MIT, the School of Business, the lecturer must start the company at the beginning of the semester together with the student. Then you know the pay. <laughs> not easy, huh? by the way. <laughs> Got a lot of companies know all are successful. <clears throat> but you need to try because that's what the demand of the millennials are, right? They want to have all this fun, they want to be their own board, no loyalty, are they the reality? And then you need to refine your USP. Okay? I think marketing, orang marketing one tahu lah, kan? And then USP, I think, should be about uniqueness. What is the uniqueness of your graduate? What is the impact, but more importantly, what is the expense? What is the magic that this graduate can produce? Yeah. But that's how you question now. Huh? You need it. Huh? And then, again, this is something that I... Look, if you think of CV, I lecture in a lot of universities. There are, you know... And my problem now is this. When I talk to students, they are not ambitious. You need it. Right? So, more than cukup makan. And you know why? Sorry to say, a lot of them are not efficient because the lecturers are not efficient. Bagi problem kampung. Bagi problem kampung. But no, you need to give global problems so that their ambition is. You need to push the boundary. You're not going to do X-Men. X-Men kampung buat apa? I mean, you know. I mean, sorry, I can't check out. So, but you need to collaborate and benchmark and compete. Yeah? So what do you mean by collaborate? Huh? I want to show you one of the collaborations that they're doing at MIT Media Lab. Antara the artists, engineers, and also the glass, the glass uh, material. Yeah? From I want to actually okay, okay. Okay, think
you see. They, they, they're doing something that traditional they cannot do. They're trying to produce uh, this positive behavior. That's why they use technology. More importantly, they collaborate, right? You see the artists, right, coming in to get working together with the glass uh, material expert and the engineer, the three D printing technology that they use. So you can see that you know, no way. You know, I'm not saying this is the future. I, I'm saying that it's uh, it's a, it's a, for you to start to take to work with others to produce things that are different from the others because that differentiator will determine your future. Right? People don't want this mediocre things that they come in. This X-Men that want to produce this positive DPL that, that eventually will come out of it. Right? Does it make sense? So what? Yeah. So, I mean, Satu lagi. I know. I work a lot with Imperial College, right? But next one, I hope to do my sabbatical next year at Royal College. Yeah. But you see what they are trying to do as well. Imperial uh, Royal College of Art to me is one of the best design school, design and art school, art and design school. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I see. It. But they are beginning to work with the engineers, and you should start working with the engineers. Right, and they even uh, set up a, a, a new program, ID, uh, Innovation Design Engineering, together with RCA, the Imperial College and RCA. And uh, they set up even a new uh, Dyson building. You know, Dyson, they have a big operation in Johor Bahru, right? Uh, they have this space for startup, right? Where the design fine art, design product engineering, and the business come together. You need to have ideas that you can sell as well. Remember, but also come up with this new program for IDE. So that's another benchmark. So one of the things that you should continue to do, benchmark. Benda dah buat banyak, sebenarnya tak susah. Right? When when people ask me about my company, who do you benchmark? Right? Investor tanya lah saya. Investor dia, siapa equivalent of you in the US? Siapa equivalent of you in the market in Malaysia? Same with you. You know why? Because you cannot do everything. You need to benchmark yourself. And you, you start doing it. One of the things I want to propose to you is internationalization. Actually, it's not just about benchmarking, it's about internationalizing. Do you know that in your university ranking, your international ranking is zero? You know that? Because Taylor's dapat full seven point. I know I'm using Taylor's point. You put your ranking zero. I did I read that you guys because you are not internationalizing yourself. Ini musah, yeah? Because a lot of people are at my they are doing great things, right? So why not in that one? Okay. I want to show you an example of a student work, then it becomes you know. In India in that sense, they have all the criteria, they benchmark, they solve global problems. You know, private problem, you know how this project? They solve Problem with GL, tapi the problem that they want to solve is global in nature. It can be solved in Africa, right? So they have all these, all these the problem solving, what for, what for, what for. Any year, design a group here, but it's global problem that they come up with this and now, right? I want to share with you one of the global problems that when I go to teach, all this refer to this new benchmark, the Microsoft Imagine Cup uh, global competition. Right? And one of the competition criteria is this. Use technology with Microsoft that's, that are able to solve three of the Millennium Goals. They are able to solve poverty, not just poverty in Malaysia, but poverty globally. So that one of the issues people ask me is that whatever your problem is, can you replicate that problem? Can you scale up that problem? That is solution, sorry. Can you, if you have a solution, can you replicate it? Can you scale it up? And of course, the next one can be sustained. So, these are, you know, I look at a lot of design school, a lot of university. They always look at this global benchmark as one of the criteria, not all. They can talk, okay, your problem that you're going to solve, your project must solve three of these problems. Uh, uh, instead of just, what did you do? Can you they didn't solve all of this. Something like that I, I want to show you. So, in Malaysia as well, you know, you should also compete. Do you know about this one? Uh, 
Ha, you tak tahu saya. Itu mana media di Malaysia letak. Ini mah, I want you to convince. Right? One of the things that you should be doing because you want to do research, you know, you want to have ideas, you want to hear there's no money. Uh, I want, there is this grant, right? Based on this. So, any of you doing any of this, you will have access to that 200 million grant. And now many people are surprised that you don't know, I know this. <laughs> I used to be, they used to be called an MGS grant, multimedia grant scheme. I was <coughs> one of the moment you remember that, big more people. You will Please go to this uh, My Creative Venture. You'll see all the... Yang menang tu boleh beli, tak ada apa benda. Oh, boleh tengok. So what? Come on. When you do this, then you are looking at the problem. You, you learn how to pitch. You, you know, you expose yourself to to to, uh, to, to the benchmark, the, the industry benchmark as well. Please, any guarantee fund yang is there for you to draw down. You need to do it. I mean, sayang kalau tak, tak, you know, not nah, surprised, nah, nah, you know, but never mind, nah, you know, please, go to uh, my creative venture and you can get a lot of money out of this, right? So, our, uh, one of the things that you have to think is that this is where you are good at. University lain, kalau you tengok engineer ke, yeah, dia, dia, dia tak ada, dia, dia dulu publish or perish, ya, tapi dia nak demo, deploy or die. Semua and you guys are doing demo all the time. Now baru demo, all graduates kena ada portfolio. Dia cakap, eh you guys are doing demo. Baru ni nak, you know, uh, in organization you, you should have what they call not just the B school, but the D school. Not just the business school, but you have the design school. You're already here. Tapi you tak ni. Saya tak apa lah, you tak ni, tak lagi kan. So publish your parent, you are there, right? It's more tangible, I think you all but you need to explore new tools, right? I think, I think, I want to show you one more. If you tell me that, sampo to WHTC, the latest one. That is, I want to show you. Are you familiar with this? I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Tilbrush is a virtual reality application. You can play it in front of you, on the side, and you and create amazing artwork in 3D. What I really like to do is take a subject and kind of tear it apart and break it up into kind of a collage of different styles and textures. To all of a sudden be able to take a brush stroke and whip it over your head and then whip another one around it. <laughs> it's amazing. The piece I'm creating today is allegorical. What really struck me was the ability that this has to be a platform for installation in museum and gallery space. For a series of like calligraphic, um, more abstract line works, you know, like a 2D image, you take it into virtual reality and you're basically sculpting or drawing. Parte de mi trabajo tiene que ver con la caligrafía. Básicamente tenía una idea que quería hacer, pero ya cuando entras al, al espacio virtual, en ese momento empieza a cambiar todo. It's a new platform, it's a first. There's so many things you can do with it. Definitely going to revolutionize how people view immersive artworks. You know, it's the kind of thing a lot of artists daydream about, but it's never something you would imagine to be real. Okay, I have this article again, but I don't think I want to show you, because it's about... I, have, you, have you seen this? It just launched in April. I think you guys should start looking at it, because the next platform will be virtual reality. Right? Facebook, of all companies, bought Oculus for 7 billion US. Oculus is a virtual reality company. Okay. Just explore, explore. I'm not saying that you will do everything. Just try. There's another slide that talks about this guy, uh, this me, animator, he uses it. Uh, this is another interesting guy. He's an old guy. I mean, he's about 65 years old. He, he develops all this uh, Disney character and he starts using it. Okay. Uh, next one is that, you know, is this. Embrace the maker movement. Can you think what the guy you ask now? MakerCon, and uh, the last MakerCon conference in New York was attended by 20,000 people. Uh, so you are 
is doing, you are already doing it, right? This is the narrative that everybody in education talk. Uh, university must promote the maker movement, the, the graduate come up with the portfolio, the graduate can show, can deploy. Ini you dah buat hari-hari. Betul tak? Nothing new. Nothing new. And yet, for them it's new. It is other new. And you're already there. Other ideas, you, you should explore. Mentoring, I think you, you shouldn't be lecturing now. Right? Uh, the role of lecturer, I think, has to change. Right? Uh, what they also call uh, producing T-shaped graduate. Not just the X-Men, but also those with the breath and also with the depth. Uh, they call it so that you can join together and make it a very strong bond. And they call it T-shaped graduate. Right? The depth and the breath. Uh, uh, of course, unstructured learning, the way you teach must be different as well. Uh, now in MIT, you know MIT is world is famous, right? Do you know how they evaluate whether the student is successful or not? When they apply for, for a job, they don't say that they're from MIT. Uang you degree. Boleh tak you dapat kerja kalau you tak cakap uang you from MIT? Ini dia. The benchmark dia lah kan. Kalau orang tahu you MIT, dia nanti dapat kerja. So the benchmark is different, it's positive behavior that we think about like Kita ni kena tunjuk, oi, bukan tu lah, saya anak datuk ni lah lagi And anyway, <laughs> storytelling is key now, the, the narrative that we are looking at education So please attend this, have you attended this? Please, I don't want to see the crowd huh? Please attend this, huh? you, uh, there's a video on it, it's, it's, I think the next one is coming uh, next week on the 24th or 27th in Ainaham, California. There's a good video. You know, I want to show a little bit. Sikit. Huh? You don't mind, I show a sikit about SIGGRAF. Huh? The SIGGRAF 2015 Hybrid Craft Exhibition showcases craft techniques and values in contemporary digital design. The following are 15 works from skilled makers. Inspired by the Wii Acoustic e-guitar, this wooden instrument was crafted based on the 3D printed guitar concept. These instruments are designed so that most of the components can be produced with digital fabrication tools, such as the laser cut folding ukulele. By using 3D printed parts and aluminum tubes, this work empowers novice makers to construct their own bicycle frames using a comprehensive kit. These examples of the creative use of computer-aided manufacturing and CNC incorporate traditional Celtic craft values with digital technology. Combining 3D printed puzzles with wearable jewelry, these puzzle rings are not only meant to be admired, but also interactive. This copper electroplated SLS nylon bowl was achieved by creating form building software. This porcelain piece combines digital design and production methods with hand drawing, traditional slip casting, and hand building processes for high fired porcelain. Using a free fall slumping technique, this This bowl is created by heating glass, discs, and letting grab. I think you've got a point, right? Please try to attend, right? Again, there's uh, another, you know, where they use augmented reality, that is, I think, Pokemon, right? Uh, <laughs> but this is augmented reality in, in art gallery. I'm sure you have seen this as well. Short video. We are very happy at the Grady Lexis Gallery that's at El Taller Latino Americano to be showing the work of Yumuen Esparza here for December and January of 2016. When people see the paintings, they're very surprised because of the quality of the artwork. Uh, what is unique about the work is the application of technology. When they view the paintings through the lens, that I don't think that I've, I've ever heard silence. There is always an exclamation and always a surprise. What I find interesting as a curator and as somebody who's been part of El Taher for over 15 years is how the application opens up the narrative to invite people to continue the story. It offers a way for people to connect to the art. Okay, I think you got the point, right? 
for Pokemon, same technology, they gunakan the art gallery. Same, 100% same uh, technology. Uh, conclusion, ada conclusion sikit lah eh. <laughs> Sorry, taking you too long eh. Sorry. Uh, so what is the conclusion eh? So, educators, I think, I think the message that uh, expose the millennial to this new world lah. Uh, right? I suggest that please, if it's not new ideas, new tools, new research, new business model, new boundaries, and more importantly, new realities. That's, that's my time. For universities, I think it should be a place for millennials to discover their dreams, right? And passion, a place that open up possibilities, which is the, in line with the first statement. And also a place, at the end of the day, we need to teach them how to live and die. <laughs> right? And more important, I, 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 you can be an employer, you do more than that. Yeah. So don't complain because lifelong learning starts after the school break. You need to have that conversation. They are putting a lot of the responsibility to the university without taking any responsibility. You know, I go to architecture school as well. They expect a fresh graduate from architecture immediately on day one able to design a 40-story building. Ridiculous. I think the expectation is blown out of the proportion and they buy a low use now. Give me a break now, you know. So I think you need to be, be, be vocal, you need to have that conversation and say, come on, you know, where is your response? You can look to Japan, you can look to the best example is uh, Germany, you know. Um, a lifelong learning starts after you graduate, right? And it's the role of the employer to do it now. So, sometimes kita ni takut. Bila, bila kena employer cakap ke minister, oh, you kena job ready. Eh, I, think, <laughs> I think you need to have that conversation. Bukan ni sikit, yeah? Finally, finally, yeah? start building that digital ecosystem. Huh? Encourage open innovation. Assemble this anti-disciplinary team. Produce those T-shaped X-Men. Embrace multidisciplinary, internationalize, benchmark, compete, right? Be an entrepreneur, right? Um, have that magic USP, right? Be a leader in the move, you know, you're already there, you can be a leader, embrace technology, be a man mentor, and encourage storytelling. Finally, start now to encourage incremental. I know that you cannot suppress innovation, where the whole will eventually be the sum of this. With that, good luck and thank you very much.